Uh, if anybody wants any more coffee, it's now refilled. So I don't know. I usually I need like two or three cups in the morning just to kind of get going. But <laughs> so all right, are you ready for the end? So we're going to talk about uh, XP migrations. Talk about your servers a little bit. Um, I'm going to talk about a uh, XP or a network assessment that we could do for you guys just to help you out a little bit. If you don't necessarily want to go to every workstation you have, uh, you might be able to upgrade your XP stations just with the hardware you have. So we have a software we can do for you and do a network assessment for you to uh, figure that out. Um, we're going to bring Kevin up. We'll talk about some Office and Windows training and backups, backups, backups. And then at the end, we'll do a little question and answer. All right. I'll play a little video here. Hey, do you think our computer is still safe? Um, I don't know. I guess it's fine. There we go. Hey, did you just give my credit card to a hacker? You're not bossing me. Windows XP end of life means no further security updates and more software patches after a little poker? No, come on. I'm trying to get some more poker, man. I'm trying to get some more poker. poker. Let's close that. Poker. Close the window. Come that on. means you're really going to be working on it. Let me turn it on. I'm going to 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 turn it on. <laughs> All right, I just need to turn this thing off. Control and delete. <laughs> oh, ain't gonna work. <clears throat> Come on, what you get? That's it. That's Shut all you got. That's all you get. Shut control it off. Delete. Control and delete. Shut it off. Control and delete. Control and delete. Shut it off. Searching. Twenty-eight percent. Found, I found. Found, I found. Beat the April 9th XP risk. Use the certified migration experts from xpmigrations.com to upgrade your computers to the latest and safest operating systems. What the heck is this? Oh, it's my new laptop. All right. All right, so just to ex explain a little bit about XP Migrations, uh, it's a, a company that we partnered with uh, to kind of get in with the what's going on in the world. As you can see, everybody needs to get off XP. Uh, what it requires is we have to uh, take some certifications and and also go to some class time and go through the process to become certified as a XP migration expert. Um, as you can see, <laughs> the deadline for the safety to migrate is April 8th. On April 9th, you're on your own to fight off the zombies and other lurking threats. So we don't, it's like one of these things. We don't know what's going to happen after that day. And, you know, I, it's like me, I, better safe than sorry kind of thing. You know. <laughs> All right, so who are they? Like I said, it's a certified XP migration expert. Fulfills your needs, pass. We had, like I said, certifications, assessments on our expertise. And it's all, we're also Microsoft certified. You know, we have, we have uh, technicians, engineers that are Microsoft certified and experts in this field. All right, Microsoft recently announced the end of support. And you can see the latest emerging technologies include Windows 7, 8, 8.1. And we can do this task for you and, you know, fairly easy. 
So I'll throw up a little comparison on here. Some of the features you get and things that you can move to by getting off XP. Um, do you guys remember the, the Microsoft commercial when Windows 8 came out about that snap? Or that, that, was, well, actually that was Windows 7, when you could snap it to the side? Um, I've used that. It's Rather than having dual monitors, you can put your spreadsheet up on one side, have your email on the other, and you can reference and just you know keep moving along. XP didn't have that feature. That was one of my favorite ones. Um, another thing you can do is, uh, where is it, a BitLocker. Uh, you can encrypt your encrypt your laptops. That way, if uh, you know it gets stolen or whatever, it's it's locked down for you. So I won't go through every single option, but you can see you're you're gonna get a lot more a lot more stuff out of Windows 8. All right. So why why use us? Why use us with the XP migrations? You know, um, can you just do it yourself? And I th I've seen a lot of people in this room, and I, I know you probably could. <laughs> but let us help you with that if you if you need it. Um, could you have one of your computer guys do it? You know, one of your out of their home kind of guys and do those kind of businesses? Sure. But you know, I gotta ask you: Would you want to do your own legal work? Would you want to do your own medical procedures? I wouldn't. <laughs> so, so best practices is you know get somebody involved that that is ready for this, certified in it. All right, servers. Windows XP isn't the only thing that's going away. As you can see, the same expiration date applies to Windows Server 2003, Exchange 2003, and Small Business Server 2003. Now, I just want to touch base on Small Business Server for sure here. Um, they are our end of life as well. For the customers in here that do have small business servers, if you're still on 2003 or even a newer version, um, the migration path is, and just explain a little quick too, uh, <laughs> it, small business server has exchange on it, and so Microsoft went away with that, and now what you have to do is go Office 365 or install another exchange server on site. So most, most customers that are migrating off the small business server are going that route. We put a, put a new server in, and then everything goes to Office 365. So that's your hosted exchange. Okay. All right, things to think about with your servers. And this is an important one right here. And I've seen this come up a lot in, in the migrations we've been doing. It's your line of business software. You've been running it on 2003 for the longest time, probably compatible with 32-bit operating systems. Well. The 32-bit isn't around anymore, so now you have to, you're going to have to work with your software vendor on their new version, or maybe renew your support on there again. That wasn't, you know, they might have let it lapse. Those are the type of things you have to think about when you uh, when you get into these migrations. Uh, antiquated hardware. Um, you know, some people have been running their 2003 on very old servers, so you know, in some cases, if you have a fairly newer server, you might be able to take 2003 off, maybe boot it in a virtual environment, and then migrate back to your old hardware. So you're going to have to think about that, too. You know, keep that in mind that you, it could, could be new hardware that you might have to go to as well. You know, and then just you know, think about your servers. Your servers are what you know, controls your environment, and you want to make sure that everything is taken care of and you know, don't want to leave that vulnerability out there for when this, when this day comes. All right, how can we help? We have... Well over 15 Microsoft certified engineers, and we've already performed <laughs> well, we've performed countless migrations, and so we can we can help this. We're used to it. We know it comes up. We can definitely help you plan it out. All right. So I'll talk a little bit about our assessment we can do for you. So what it does is we can create a report, and it'll go out and scan all your systems. Uh, looking for the XP workstations. Uh, we can also include your servers on that. And what it's going to do is it's going to let you know if it's ready to migrate. So, you know, you might not necessarily have to buy all new hardware. You might just replace one piece in, in the computer or, or it's actually all ready to go and you just have to upgrade. Okay. And I'll show you a couple examples of these reports and how they look. You can see on this network, there was 46 computers that were scanned, seven of them were XP, and three were good candidates for it. On the bottom, you can see solid green, obviously excellent, 
and we got one that's very good. Now, the very good one might just maybe need a new video card or need to upgrade the RAM or, you know, those type of things. And as you can see, it gets in a little more detail, so you can actually see what's on the computer, and, and then we'll know that, you know, we have too small of a hard drive. We're not, we don't have enough RAM. We, we'll go through, go through those kind of things. Application compatibility. So I'll, I'll give you an idea of, you know, the computers that we searched and the applications that you could be running on your network and if it's going to be compatible or not with the next version of And drivers, another, another thing to think about. You know, if the, if the hardware is too old, it's not going to run in Windows 7, Windows 8. All right, so I'm going to bring up Kevin Bass now, and he's going to talk a little bit about our office and Windows training. Thanks, sir. I will be brief. Uh, as a trainer, I'm always mindful of a great quote from Mark Twain, the mind can only absorb and the behind can endure. So we'll, uh, I'll keep it brief. Um, <coughs> when you're talking all the technical changes that you're looking at with your, you know, going to my, uh, away from XP and Office 2003, it's important not to forget the changes that are going to be facing your end users. Because you have your traditional Windows uh, or Office interface, drop-down menus, commands easily you know, visible, and a lot of muscle memory for people to navigate through these programs. But when you go to the new Office, you're faced with an entirely different interface. Uh, you have the Office ribbon, where the commands are meant to be visible, but they're foreign to your end users. And same thing with XP. Now XP, or I'm sorry, Windows 7, jumping from XP to Windows 7 isn't a big jump for your users because it looks the same. But there are things that are going to confuse them, you know, when you get the, the window previews and things like that. Um, we just recently switched over many of our users to Windows 7. And it went fairly smoothly. Windows 8, that's a whole other animal. Uh, significantly different interface. So your users will have to adapt to this environment. And um, when confronted with these kind of changes, your user reactions typically fall under three categories. Sir. One is confusion. What the heck is this? What am I looking at? Next, it's consternation. Where the heck is my command? I used to click here and do this and do that, and I'd have it done. Now I have to hunt for it. And then lastly, they just go, oh my gosh, I'm, what do I do? So how do we deal with this? What we can do to help you is we can do what I call transition training. Short sessions, one to two hours. We can talk about Windows. Word, Excel, PowerPoint, whatever you want. We can tailor it for what you want to go to. And what we do is we basically show your users tips and tricks on how to navigate these new environments. For example, navigating the new Office interface. There's one tiny little button hidden on the ribbon that can make it easy to bring up a dialog box showing you all the commands that you might need. But most people don't know it's there and it's overlooked. So we can help you with that. We also have some excellent quick reference guides that we get from a, custom, a company called Custom Guide. And uh, there we would give you those. You can print them as you need them, give them to your end users, makes it easy to find commands and do stuff. So, and what we also recommend is get your training in before you deploy. You know, plopping stuff on people's desk tends to cause a little more disruption. So if you can get them trained, couple of weeks beforehand or even the week before just to get them acclimated. The shock's going to be less and your transition's going to be a lot smoother. So uh, anybody have any questions for me? Okay, thanks. All right, back to me. We'll turn to talk about backups quick. Um, the reason I bring backups bring backups up <laughs> is because, like I said, it's one of those inevitable things. We don't know what's going to happen. You know, let's, let's be prepared. All right. Does everybody know what kind of backups they have right now on their network? Does everybody know how it works and what it does? 
if your system becomes compromised, how quickly can you restore? Before April 8th, make sure your backups are good. All right, so let us find the right solution for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the different solutions that we work with. On you know, There's a couple more out there, but these are the ones that kind of we, we work with the most. And just some recommendations, and I'll go through uh, what each one does for you and, and kind of restore times. All right, I'm sure most of you have heard of Carbonite. Carbonite is a file level backup, and it's also an so it also takes your data off site. So you are going to install this more on your PCs, you know, like desktops, laptops, and you know it's it's browser based dashboard that you can actually watch your whole company. So if you wanted to install it on all, all your uh, users' computers, you can manage it through the through the portal page. And if you do have to restore, it's basically downloading it back from the internet. So laptop gets messed up, compromised, you know, you just want to reload it, refresh, and then you can pull all the data back down. You reinstall Carbonite, say don't, you know, restore my laptop, everything comes back on. And just these are the average prices you see. You know, this is for individual computers, 60 bucks a year. Pro plans, you can do unlimited computers on that, and that's that's per year. All right, Shadow Protect. Shadow Protect is a image-based software, and how I make, like to explain image-based software to everybody is, is it's taking a picture. It's taking a picture of your entire system, your operating system, your files, your settings, the programs you have installed, everything that's on there, snapshot, and then you put it on a storage device, whether it be a hard, you know, USB hard drive or a NAS box connected to the network. You just you put it you put it on a device for for your storage. In the event that uh, something happens, you know, like I said, we get compromised, get a nasty virus, can't clean it, or even in the computer crashes itself, we can restore this by just doing it, uh, basically taking the picture, restoring it back on the device. Once it's done, reboot, back up and run it again. Okay. These are just the common scenarios that you might use this on your desktops. You know, you can have your users have an external drive plugged in, or like I said, when they're in the network, you can have a backup to a local NAS. And you know, it's even if, say, I, I like this example too, it, you can do bare metal re restorations. That's what I was saying about taking the picture and putting it back on again. So say they lose their laptop, it gets stolen, or whatever. They had that backup. You can just throw their stuff right back on from the last backup that they had. And you can see malware, virus, you know, Testing your business's disaster recovery plan is probably something to think about. You know, making sure that we're all ready for this, just in case. It's like Y2K all over again. <laughs> all right. Lastly, I'll talk about Datto. Uh, this is more. This can be small business to enterprise level of backup devices. It's for Windows servers only. Once again, image-based backup, and. What it is is you saw those devices. Those are all local devices on your network. Okay, so it's another basically computer server or whatever that sits on your network. And I know I see some of you that actually have these already. So <laughs> uh, it backs up using the Shadow Protect agent. Backs up to the local device. Okay, so you have your local backups there, and then it replicates offsite for you. So now you don't have to change tapes. You don't have to change all drives. You don't have to worry about it. It's it's going offsite to a server and a server our data sorry, data center in uh, Connecticut, and then they actually replicate theirs over to Utah. So I always like to say your data is in four places: it's on your server, it's on the local device, and then these two data centers. And you can back up uh, workstations as well. I do have a couple customers that actually just bought one of these just to back up the workstations and the server as well. All right. Just to explain about the Cirrus device, uh, this device allows for local virtualization. Now, what I mean by that is, say, for example, you come in in the morning and one of your business line application servers is down. It, it, it's corrupt. It's you know just not working. You can log.
back on going back to a physical server, you can do a bare metal restore back onto that server. Another thing it does, easy file restoration. We talked about the image, uh, image-based backups, the pictures, and that's taking the whole thing. You can still do file level restores. It's basically mounting, mounting an image, and when you go look at it, it'll show your file structure. So you can go find your deleted file or your corrupt file and copy and paste back into the, the place that you need it. And then finally, last thing it does is screenshot verification. Uh, this is doing test boots of your server. So every day, uh, you, can, you can do it every hour if you want or every day, and what it'll do is virtually boot up your server on the device, take a screenshot of it, and then email it to you. So you know that, hey, this is testing my server. I know it's going to boot, and everything's going to work out great. The data all told, this is designed for small business people out there. Smaller box, it really only supports up to about 500 gigs of, of used data. And it supports up to four agents. Now, four agents means two computers, two servers, however you want to break it out, but basically four Windows, Windows agents. And the other thing that this has different from the other one is what they call hybrid virtualization. And as you can see by the chart down here, say, for example, I have this database server that goes down. Okay? So what it does is it actually creates an automatic VPN and goes to the cloud, to the data cloud, and pulls your information through there. So it, it, it's going to kind of rely on your bandwidth and, you know, and how your network's set up. But it, it will pull your data back to the box, and then the users file systems, email, everything keeps functioning as it runs through there. So any questions at all? No? One, two, three. All right. So because you came here today, we're going to throw a couple special offers up here for you. <laughs> so write this down. You can con my contact info. And we're going to give you the secret password. XP is not for me. <laughs> no longer for me, sorry. And what we can do is if you want us to do these uh, network assessments for you, we'll, uh, we'll take $100 off. The, the minimum one we have, it, it's, it's kind of based on your network size, and you know, I, can, I can get the info to you, um, but we can take $100 off that network assessment. And then also if you are interested in the datos at all, um, your price is going to depend on the model, how big, how big a model you, you need for your environment, and that's based on the, how you figure these out is your used data. So, like, if you're using, you know, 200 gigs or, or 300 gigs, we want to make sure you get you the right model for that. And that, so there's a hardware cost and a uh, replication fee for those as well. All right. Thank you. <laughs>